so welcome again to office hours um so let's go over some highlights from last week or sorry the last month um so march we've been uh pretty focused on performance and stability so this is why um we've held back on launching new features because we want to take some time to polish um, and enhance the features we have. We did do one major release though, which is self-contained faults, which is now an early preview. Um, and I'll be going over a demo of that at the end as well. Um, highlights for performance, um, really across the board, um, we've optimized um, a lot of the slow paths or things that were taking more than a couple of seconds to complete. Um, some notable callouts is hover, preview, and editing. And just to see what that means, so this is just an example vault. Um, hovering, it is a feature that you probably found by accident, but it is when you uh, hover over a wiki link and dungeon um, you get a preview of uh, what is inside that note. It used to take a few seconds before this hover uh, for this hover to render. It is now basically instant. Um, the cool thing about the hover that most people might not be aware of is that you can also trigger it with a keyboard shortcut. So by default, it's not bound to anything. Um, in this case, I chose to bound it, bind it to Control H. And so it's one way of seeing previews without actually having the preview open. Um, VS Code also has a way of peeking into the note. So peeking is seeing the raw note, um, and then hovering is seeing the preview version of the note. So that's much faster. Um, the other thing that we improved the speed on is just rendering of the uh, rendering of Markdown. Um, there were a few cases in the past where it could take more than a few seconds to render. Um, you should notice that even for large nodes, uh, rendering should be basically instant at this point. Um, and the last part is just editing. Um, there are certain things Dungeon does um, behind the scenes, for example, keeping track of the updated time and decorating the notes that sometimes um, that would sometimes take longer to complete. Um, but now we've not just optimized that, but we also made sure that it wasn't, uh, that it's not in the same process as your editor loop, which means that um, all of the niceties in terms of like decorators and highlighting and whatnot um, sh will not affect your editing experience. So if you notice that just like simply typing is and doing generally any other operation is uh, smoother now, um, post-March. Okay, and those are the performance highlights. Uh, in terms of stability, uh, lots of work in terms of covering a bunch of edge cases. Um, we used to have issues where if you uh, modified your engine.yaml and you had you removed a vault or you removed certain configs, that engine would just crash on startup. Um, we're a little smarter about that now, so we won't crash, we'll give you an error. You have ways to auto-fixing uh, vaults that aren't properly configured. And um, a bunch of edge cases with YAML in general, so if a title is actually a number, uh, being able to parse it properly, um, and well, there's a whole list of things here. And these are the notable ones. Uh, there's lots of other fixes. Um, but the takeaway in general is that perf and stability are now both greatly improved uh, post-March. Um, before, so the next part I'll go into or uh, new feature launch, or that's an early preview, which is self-contained vaults. But I wanna make sure that there aren't any questions before I continue. So going once going twice. All right, so let's talk about self-contained vaults. So especially if you're new to Dendron, you might uh, be unfamiliar with this term. 
even if you're not, you might be unfamiliar because we just uh, introduced it. Um, but essentially, the way that your notes are stored in Dendron, the current model is you have a workspace, and then inside that workspace, you have one or more vaults. And the idea here is for portability, that you can, um, that a workspace can have any combination of vaults and you can mix and match vaults for different workspaces. And while this is good in theory, it does make it a lot harder for people to share vaults. So if you just had like a vault about cooking, for example, and you wanted to share it with a colleague, um, it's harder to do that because before they could use the vault, they would also need to add it to their own workspace or that vault would need to come with a workspace. Um, Self-contained vaults, we basically remove the concept of a workspace so that every vault um, is able to stand by itself. Um, hello, Sylvan. Welcome to Office Hours. Um, we are right now talking about self-contained vaults, which is uh, something that is currently in early preview. Um, and self-contained vaults, what they let you do is they let you share a vault and somebody else that uh, gets access to it is able to work with it and have access to all of Dendron's functionality uh, without needing to bother with also getting a workspace. And in terms of how to enable that today, um, the easiest way to do this is using a VS Code uh, property. So there's a new option that's called Dendron Enable Self-Contained Vault Workspace, which is a little bit of a mouthful. Um, by default, it's false, and you can set it to true. And let's do it over here. Um, when you set it to true, um, there's lots of places where you can set it. Um, for settings in VS Code, you can set it on a workspace level or you can set it on a global level. Um, in this case, we're just going to set it on a global level. Uh, so we're going to set Dungeon Enable Self-Contained Vault Workspace to be true. You can toggle this also via autocomplete if you don't remember the name. And um, what this does is now, for example, if I wanted to create a new uh, vault using Initialize Workspace, um, let's say that you know, I want to create a native workspace and I want to call it self-contained. Um, waiting for this to load and what you see, well, okay, we need to also change over to that workspace. And let's see if the demo gods will cooperate. Okay, let's try this again. Initialize workspace. Um, we'll initialize a new workspace and call it self-contained and we'll create the workspace here. Um, and what will happen is you have a fully functioning um, Dungeon workspace um, that is essentially identical to what you currently would have. Um, but the difference here is if you open up the file on disk, what you will notice, let's go up one level, is that instead of the uh, vaults uh, folder, you have a notes folder. And the idea is you can take this self-contained folder and you can either zip it, copy it, put it into version control, publish it in Git. And this is all you need uh, or all anybody will need to work with uh, the contents of these notes. Um, and so instead of having to download a workspace and then downloading a vault, um, you can just use a vault and uh, be able to uh, get started. 
And then self-contained vaults, you can add a vault can contain other vaults. So like um, the functionality that you had using Dungeon Workspaces is now uh, part of the vault. Um, and yeah, and the biggest thing this unlocks is just, it makes it easier for you to synchronize, for example, using Git just for yourself, or if you wanted to share vaults with other people, because now you no longer need a workspace to do so. You can just um, share the URL for wherever the vault is stored, and that's all somebody would need to start working with the notes. Um, yeah, so as I mentioned, the feature is in preview. Um, you can enable it using the flag, but um, if you fill out the survey, we also give you we also offer a dedicated early preview channel where we uh, help folks with the transition from if you're converting from the current workspace setup to a self-contained vault setup. Um, all right, so that's the main highlights for last month. Any questions at this point? Will we be able to take a current hierarchy and use it as a basis for a new self-contained vault? Um, I think so. So if I understand your question, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, it's, let's say that I have a hierarchy like fruit. And I don't know, fruit, banana, uh, fruit, orange. And what you're saying is, can I take this fruit hierarchy and then move it or make it into its own self-contained vault? Um, and yeah, so the answer is yes. I mean, you can actually do that today if you just wanted to create a new vault. Um, so the way you would do that in Dungeon, you have the vault add command to add additional vaults. Let's add a new vault. Let's call it the fruit vault. And so now you have two vaults in Dungeon. You have the self-contained and you have fruit. And then if you look at the tree view, you also have like two root nodes to uh, represent that. So to move over the fruit node, um, into the fruit vault, what you could do, for example, is you can use the move node command, uh, multi-select, select all the fruit, and then move them to the fruit vault. Um, and then you get a warning, well, not a warning, just a notice that you're moving all these nodes. And uh, what this will do is it will move over, the fruit uh, into the fruit vault and out of the self-contained vault. Um, and you can you can do this today uh, with workspaces. The only issue is if you wanted to share this fruit vault with somebody else, they wouldn't be able to use it right away. They would have to import it into their own workspace. And so what self-contained vaults do is you can actually just take the folder containing the fruit vault and somebody else would be able to use it. Uh, yeah, this software is pretty cool. Uh, I think I, you know, um, we have a lot of good people working on it, and um, I've definitely have long since outsourced like a lot of, uh, yeah, my day to day with uh, Dendron. It's one of the first things I install when I get a new computer, and it's hard to function now without uh, assistance in this regard. Um, anything else we can go over while you're here?
Um, all right, so in terms of pointing a uh, dungeon at a specific Git installation, um, we, so what we do is we just use whatever Git is installed in your system. Um, so whatever Git VS Code recognizes um, as the Git that is running when you start a terminal, that is the same Git that Dendron will use. We essentially just shell out to your system Git. And so um, in order to point at any specific Git installation, um, if you can make VS Code recognize it, then you sh uh, Dendron should, in theory, be able to recognize it. Um, don't quote me on that, though. Um, I would test it out. And if not, then we can uh, see uh, about supporting that. Um, but yeah, you should definitely be able to, uh, in theory, you should be able to then get um, at a specific installation. Um, and then, and um, I don't think it requires you to install it on the system. I haven't gone through like actually setting that up, but it, um, by, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to do that. Um, one thing also that was recently launched in uh, VS Code, it's not Git, but it's pretty helpful, is local history. Um, so this is just, let's see if we can showcase this here. Um, so VS Code now has this concept of local history for a file. And so let's say that this is one version and this is another version. Uh, VS Code itself will um, keep track of revisions. I believe it is on save. And, but I also think this is configurable. So it's not Git, it's not version control, but you do have, well, it is, a limited sort of version control. So if this is all you're looking for, the ability to like see different versions of files as you work on them, um, that's actually now natively supported inside of VS Code without uh, any add-ons, as long as you are using the 1.66 version. Yeah, it's uh, it wouldn't be the same thing. So, the yeah, the better experience is definitely um, using uh, being able to use Git. If you use Git, Dungeon has a lot of commands that integrate with Git. So, for example, workspace sync um, is the command that it's essentially or version of managing multiple repos. So, what you're looking at right now, this is our team repo, and inside of our team repo. It's interesting because uh, we have uh, 10 different vaults. Um, it's one of the larger workspaces. And the nice thing in each vault is a different uh, repo. And so when we run workspace sync, it takes care of pulling, pushing, and synchronizing all these different vaults. So it's like a, a it's essentially like a multi repo Git manager uh, for Dungeon Docs. Let's see, um, anything else to cover today? Uh, we're running towards the top of the time, so three minutes. Um, what can we cover in three minutes? And that's... Yeah, I would say um, going back to the topic of like using if using Dendron, if you, so it sounds like you do have access to VS Code at work. It's just that you don't have access to Git. And so you're not able to use the Git based commands. Um, and if that's the case, okay. 
and you have both Git and VS Code on USB. Um, yeah, I would say for this, um, let keep us updated on how the finagling with getting VS Code to recognize Git works out. Um, there are actually quite a number of people that do run VS Code and Dendron on a USB stick just because it's a nice portable setup and they can use it in multiple places without having to worry about synchronizing. Um, so I think, you know, like it's definitely a valid use case. And if you either run into any success or any blockers, um, do feel free to share it in the either the workflows channel or like the questions channel and it'll be a good thing to it'll be a good workflow to have just because we do have a lot of users that use the portable version as well all right um with that that is all for office hours um so as a reminder uh notes so Google Doc and video will be posted uh, at the latest by next week's release. Next week, we also have New User Tuesdays, uh, which specifically is for new users, but you don't have to be a new user. Um, that's more of just like a Q&A of like basic questions. And it's like office hours, except instead of going over highlights, we'll go over like some uh, popular workflows and then also just go over any questions people might have. All right. Um, yeah, thanks for attending and see you again.